see. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You just stepped into the world of the man, his mind, and his money, the ultimate podcast, where we dive deep into the untamed territory. That's right. This is mentality. We're unlocking the vault and powerful discussion and real stories and epic strategies for conquering life's challenges one shift at a time. Whether you're a go-getter chasing that bag, a servant leader seeking enlightenment, or striving to become the unbreakable force in your own life, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you know every time we drop exclusive content for people just like you. Without further ado, I got the brothers with me this morning. King Mark, how you feel? Man, I'm here. I'm ready to rock it, man. Let's get it done. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> King Collins, what's the word, man? What we on, gang? Hey, this this is it right here. Everything gets better when you do. I'm King Collins. I'm help. I'm here to help you get better. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, family. We back with another one. We are on what part three, part four of how to win friends and influence people. King Collins, what we got? Talk to me. One second. Let me get let me get the Facebook. Let me get the Facebook public. We can go back on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? But right now we are on uh part three of how to win friends and influence people. This is how to win people to your way of thinking. Right? There are three sections that we're covering: section seven, eight, and nine. Se section seven is how to get cooperation. Section eight is a formula that will work wonders for you. And section nine is what everybody wants. What is it that everybody wants? So I'll start with, uh, with section one, how to get cooperation, right? <laughs> this is a coaching principle that I took away from here. And it is that have more people have more faith in their own ideas. Yeah, People have more faith in their own ideas than the ideas that you give them. Yeah. I don't know if this ever happened yeah. to you. But I've given some people some great advice, and I've been frustrated when they didn't do it. Why? It didn't come from them, right? It it, it would have more belief, more faith, more conviction if it came from them. And and it, it is simple, it's right? You all know your areas of, of failure. You all know your flaws. You all know what you can and will and won't do, right? So, since you already know these things about you, that your ideas inherently sound better than any idea that anyone else ever gave you. And it's a coaching principle, yeah. right? When, when, when you coach, you just sit back and, and listen, right? It's it's how education is supposed to work, right? Mark mentioned a JUCO. And, and Mark, I'll let you explain JUCO in, in a second, but you mentioned the JUCO and, and it's like, well, that's how education works. So Mark, as, as the educator, I'll let you fill them in on the JUCO. A JUCO. <laughs> a JUCO. Get out of there, man. <laughs> Juco. Yeah, and Juco sounds like exactly like what it is, right? You heard of education. And a Juco is the foundation, the, the, the base word of um of education. It comes is Latin and it comes it 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 means to draw from within. So that means that true education is ultimately when you learn about you, right? It sound it just makes sense, right? And so when we look at this situation, ultimately, ultimately what we what we unpack is that man, your truth, you can't you can't go against your truth. You you you'll never go against what you believe deep down inside of you. It's one thing for me to share, like right now, King Collins, King Tim, myself, we are to some degree imposing our belief on you. Yeah. And if we've if we've used enough tact, then maybe we've gotten you to lift your lens of your BS meter and consider what we're saying to be true. But if we haven't, <laughs> on you will you go. Like, Some don't smell right. right about this message. Like, this a juco steak. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good point, CJ. Point. Yeah, I, I yeah, think I for mean, me it's right. like there, I'm sorry, there's power ahead. to be found. Oh, I'm sorry. There, there's power to be found in accountability and community. 
right? When all members of a community can visualize the same image of success and hold one another accountable to actually obtain that, then victory, there, there will always be a victorious outcome. And so we have to think about that as, you know, I'm speaking from the perspective of a leader, right? To get cooperation, here's the power thought. To get cooperation, give the power of decision. Mm -hmm. To get cooperation, give the power of decision. Not, that's hard. Most people, <laughs> that's what most people don't want. But they think about the power in consent versus authority. This, this all goes back to what I said. Man, once you realize that you can't control people, you have literally no control over people, unless you got a sword. Now, nah, then you got all the control. No, I'm playing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but then all the control is in their truth. And that's all you need. Yeah. Get to the heart of their truth you'll win their cooperation. Yeah. Tim, Tim, what was you going with that? No, I was just saying, um, you know, uh, people's emotions and their biases play a significant role in their behavior. So if you want yeah. to influence someone's behavior, then you need to tap into their emotions and their biases. And well, what am I saying? I'm saying you need to empathize with them. You need to understand them. And then you can understand why they make some of the decisions that they make, why they move the way they move, why they're a night person versus why they're a day person. And then their behavior determines the lifestyle and their their lifestyle determines where you fit in. Because if your lifestyle, if, if someone's lifestyle goes directly against what you're trying to, you know, pound in them or give them, then guess what? They're going to put that on the back burner and they'll see you in what, two to three years, Mark? You say take about two to three years for that to come for, for for the lesson to hit home and then people swing the block on you. Well, it's gonna take about two to That's three years for the experience. average person. For the average person. Yeah. It's gonna take about two to three years. But you know, <laughs> you have to fit into their lifestyle and you have to fit into what their biases are and um what 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 their emotions are and how they dictate and control them themselves. Yeah. Um I put that in my notes. Like, if you want to know whether or not you're uh, you're about to be disappointed in some advice you're about to give, you want to know if somebody's not going to listen to you, start your sentence off with, you should do this. <laughs> well, you know what you should do? <laughs> you know what you should do? You should do this. They're not going to listen. If you start your sentence off like that, you lost it. Like, prepare yourself for disappointment. If you're sitting to start with, I know what you should do. You should do this. Right? You don't want to force your opinions on others. Instead, ask questions and make simple success, suge suggestions and allow them to come to their own conclusions. Right? Absolutely. You ask questions and make simple suggestions and allow them to come to their own conclusions. Don't, don't be hitting people. You know what you should do? Or you better do this. Don't nobody, like they tune you out immediately. No, nobody is listening to that. Right? Yeah. People, now you're nagging. Yeah, now you're <laughs> nagging. Even, even now to you're that nagging. point, like what you're saying right now, that's, that's something that I love about mentality mastermind right because because even this morning when we were when we were speaking i was sharing about a business decision that i'm looking to make i love how you posed the question and it was in it was in it was in the, it was in that context that that this actually applies what we're talking about and all the way down to whether you ask for my advice or my opinion yeah. See, That's when you ask for my opinion, I go internally and then I project. I back out. I zoom out. I go internal and then I project. Versus when you ask for my advice, I lean in and I observe. Right? That's that's gold for <laughs> you know you need. King, you need the presence of, of counsel. You can't do this thing by yourself, right? No man does anything great by himself. Listen, if you do it by yourself, it's only going to happen once. And you be like, what you going to say? You can hear with that Mark Neesmith quote. 
I ain't doing this again by myself. <laughs> I'm not Promise. building nothing again by myself. Why? I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh yeah, you weren't supposed to yes. be. You were you you weren't supposed to be building by yourself. Right. They yeah, say right division. Right. Why do you need the right division to make it plain? So your team can see it. Like this is <laughs> so others can see it and run with it. Right? Absolutely. It's like it, if you want to do it fast, go by yourself. You want to make it last, go with a class. Hey. Okay. All right. All right. You get you That's got the, you got the other guy who says, um, man, you know, it, it, it you know, at the, the mountain top is lonely, but it's a beautiful sight. And I say to you, yeah, but who's there to tell the story? The story? Like <laughs> you there by yourself. Where's the? I'd rather have a party, right? At least somebody's there to tell the story. Yeah. It's like it's like we we have to we have to get outside of the. This is so hard for the average person to think about anybody other than themselves. Yeah. Me, 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 me. And that probably right into number eight. <laughs> yeah, that brings it right, right. So, so number seven is to get cooperation, give the power of decision. Allow other people to make their own decisions, draw their own conclusions, and be and, and listen. When they come to you and they tell you about this, don't say that's what I said. <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> <laughs> don't, listen, don't, 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 that, that's what I said. I, you should, if you had listened to me, no, just, just I told you so. People, allow people to come to these conclusions on their own, make simple suggestions and ask questions. And when they tell you something that you told them, don't say, I, listen, nobody likes my know it all friend, and nobody likes my I told you so friend. Nobody likes these people. Man. Right. If you want to, if you're trying to lose friends, tell people I told you so. Just go around doing that. You're gonna lose friends. Like I promise you, nobody wants to hear that. And that leads us to uh number eight, a formula that works. A formula that works. Any fool can condemn a man, but a man of wisdom takes the time to understand his point of view. Right. It's it's very difficult to critique and criticize people for their decisions because you don't understand. I don't understand why she keep dating this type of guy. I don't understand why he keep dating this type of woman. I don't understand why he don't just quit his job. Look, uh, have you tried? <laughs> like, you ain't try. You ain't trying to understand nobody. You, it's easy to condemn, but you don't like what people do for you, right? Even myself, it's easier for me to condemn. I try to look for. It's work for me to look for ways where I appreciate people. It's it's work for me to look for ways to celebrate people. It's work for me to look for ways to sit back and try to understand why you're doing what you're doing, even if I don't agree. And like I think in our society and our culture, like we're we're like we're almost like champion this me against you like sensationalism. I, it's it's one of the negative things that podcasts have done. Podcasts have put men against women. And, you know, the right is against the left. The left is against right. And everybody's just dividing because no one wants to sympathize or even take the time to understand the other person's point of view. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like any yeah. fool can criticize, complain, and condemn. And most of them do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I, li I like what Dan Kennedy, the, um, the, the market, you know, the world-renowned marketing uh um, expert, mastermind guru, right, um, at this point. But what he said was powerful. He said, you know, we all talk about um, wanting in inclusion, but in reality, we really desire separation. I was talking to Tanika. She was like, are we going backwards? Why is there a black Forbes? I was like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Awkward moment. <laughs> the moment <I> went. <laughs> yes, 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 we're going know. back. The moment <laughs> went, man. That's crazy. You know, it's yeah. like, maybe maybe that is, you know, and and I can see this in so many ways, even, even in my ability as an entrepreneur to sell exclusivity. 
I'm selling exclusivity. Yeah. Right? It's like it's like your desire to not be a it's something about your ego that that wants to exalt itself above the common man or above one's peer as if that's the measurement of success or if, and it's not so what is it about us that seeks that 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 self gratification is like it it, it it that's not the win you know <laughs> that's not the bar that's not the standard the the standard is I love what he said the standard is actually in your ability to get other to understand others and then get them to cooperate or move it like that's the man right I love I love um I love Proverbs 11 30 the fruit of a righteous person is a tree of life and a winner of souls is wise like let that be your measurement, you know, your ability to win people over. Yeah. Your ability to convert a soul, something you can't see. Right? That's the why is that that wisdom. Let that be the measuring tool. Not yeah. your ability to separate yourself. <laughs> it, it, on the basis, That's not what crit, crit, criticism have have has never converted atheists. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, you know, criticism only yeah. makes people cranky, no matter yeah. how constructive you think it is. That's yeah, it. You, you just all you're gonna do is upset people. You know, oh, it's I'm, constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You just can't take constructive criticism. Nobody can. Shut up. <laughs> like, hey, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's not constructive. You're criticizing me. Like, I don't That's care it. how much frosting you put on it. That is still dog doo doo. You know what I mean? Like, you're criticizing <laughs> yeah. my work here. You know what I mean? Kid yeah. Collins, he used to always say, don't tell me I have great potential. What are you talking about? Great potential. <laughs> what do you mean I got great potential? Stop criticizing me. <laughs> great potential. Translation. You ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and, it, and, it, and it used this principle in the book, right, where he asked his sales team. He actually tells him, like, what is it that you guys expect from me? What is yeah. it that you want from me as your leader? Right? And he just shut up and listen. And they told him, we want you to do this. We want you to do this. We want, we want this, 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 this. And after they finished, they listed all the things they want from him. And he said, okay, if I can give you these things, what can I expect from you? And it was like they were selling themselves. Right? They was like, oh, you can expect... They said one guy even offered to work longer hours. You can expect me to work. If you give me that, you can expect me to work 14 hours a day. I ain't asked you. All right, cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Right? You mm -hmm. just ask questions, sit back and listen. What what is it that I can expect from you? Right? You want to criticize some people? You right? Even even like early in our conversation when I was talking to Mark, I said, Mark, man, what what would you tell me to do if I was in your shoes? Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. I would tell you to do. I probably tell you to do. I didn't have to tell. Hey, Mark, this is what you should do with your business. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> you ain't got the answer, Sway. You ain't got the answer, Sway. <laughs> Sway. <laughs> no, but it's like in you know in mental health, we do this. We have this practice called motivational interviewing, or MI. You know, and so in MI, what my job as the facilitator is to get you to talking about you or your situation. And then for me to embody that, I need to listen to everything that it is that you're saying. I'm not listening to respond. I'm not writing anything down. I'm not typing anything. I'm not thinking of what my next part is going to be or anything like that. I, my sole purpose is to understand you, your pain points, and what's got you here to where we're together at this moment. And then after that, I'm going to regurgitate that to you. I'm going to tell you what I what it sounds like to me that you're saying. And the purpose of that is because I want to understand where you are suffering. I want to I want to understand where your pain is because once I connect to your pain, once I connect to your suffering, then I'll be able to make a difference and we'll be able to make a connection because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. And I, I think that was so powerful here, even in that, 
And I use the same methodology for my sales team. The first the first meeting is all questions. And a lot of times we'll get people say, man, you're asking a lot of questions about our situation. And, and, and I've taught them to combat that by saying, well, hey, you know, hey, I, if I was in your situation, I'd absolutely agree. These are a lot of questions. I completely understand. But let me ask you a question if you don't mind. Another question if you don't mind. How long did it take you to get into this situation? Yeah. And they'll say, you know, man, it took it took a long time to get here. And I said, well, you know, essentially you're asking us to come in and do surgery and, you know, tear open your business to some degree. You know, that should be done with compassion and empathy. That should be done with consideration. That should be done, especially considering that a lot of people are going to be cut that had no say so in this conversation that we're having right now. We want to do that with the most empathy possible. Um, therefore, we need to have a full understanding of what's going on in the situation as best as possible. And and it didn't take this didn't happen overnight, right? So this 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 took ten years to get to this point. This took five years to get to this point. Is it worth spending 45 minutes to get a deeper understanding? And usually once you say it that way, it's like, oh man, and now I respect you for asking the questions that you're asking. I respect you for trying to gain a deeper understanding. It's like the, the power in questions. Nobody don't tell me what you think. Just ask questions. And that that leads to the power thought. Think like and for other thinking like and for others is far greater than thinking for oneself. Thinking like and for others is far greater than sitting back thinking of, thinking for yourself. Yeah. Um, and, and you put that here, empathy is the ultimate superpower. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, it's true, right? Like, Like, people don't buy when they feel, when they understand you. People do not buy, I mean, if you, this is entrepreneurship 101, I mean, for all my business leaders, or even if you're in sales or if you're a marketer, whatever the case, right? Like sell pain and sell what people love. Why? Because people don't buy when they feel, when they, when they understand <laughs> you. People buy when they feel understood. Yeah. He gets me. She gets me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that, yeah, I mean. When, when, when they understand you. They may they may step they they may step back right, but when they feel like you understand them, they draw close. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here's here's a man that understands my frustrations. Yes, right? he At, gets me. I, I, I wrote it as people don't want to be sold; they want to be served. Absolutely. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well put. And um, so that right there. Oh, I'll leave with this. Right, this is this is really good. So this was: I'd rather walk the sidewalk in front of a person's office for two hours before an interview, than to step into the office without a perfectly clear idea of what I was going to say to that person, and from my knowledge based on his interests, how he would respond. Like that level of anticipation for conversations, most people don't do. I'm guilty of it for myself. Right. I listen. When I was looking for a job, I was doing interviews. I was just winging it, right? <laughs> I was just, I was just gonna wing it, right? Because I was like, I need to get good at interviewing. You, you probably don't get good head. at interviewing. Hey, you, you don't get good for interviewing that was by winging it. Thought I, that that came to me. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, it hurt my head. Like you'd be shocked how many. I mean, to anybody who's a recruiter <laughs> out there, you know, anybody. Mm, mm. You know, hire a hire, you know, an employer and hiring people, you get it, man. Like people people don't even check the website to understand what's going on. I don't even know what position <laughs> I'm interviewing for. Can you tell me the position again? <laughs> just winging it, right? I'm getting good at interviews. I'm just gonna wing it. Man, you should probably take some time to prepare. <laughs> right. It's right. It's right. But is it like See things from the other person's point of view requires you to prepare for conversations. Absolutely. But if you just look at it from your point of view, you just look at it like, well, I need a job. And they hiring. Mm -hmm. So you should hire me. 
You think you're the only candidate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, what do you like? So, what makes you want to work here? I need a job. Like that's no, I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, right? But I was guilty of it, man. I was guilty of just going to these interviews to be like, hey, uh, where you want to be in five years? Well, where you are. How you gonna be where I'm at in five years, man? <laughs> man, you just insulted me. You think it took me five years to get here? <laughs> I, honestly, I'd like to be in your position to hire somebody like me, right? You know, you hire yeah. me, you can sit back. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm coming to take your job so you can take something else, right? No, this is bad, right? This is bad, man. I was going to interview just bad. That's hilarious. I don't, I don't know why they didn't hire me. I showed up. I told him I want their job. You know what I'm saying? You hiring. I'm looking for a job. We make a perfect match. You ain't even got any. What do you know about the company? Like, uh, we both got problems. One hand washed the other. Both washed the face. Right. I'm not sure what company this is, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know where yeah. we're located? I don't know where y'all located at. Do I got to drive in every day? Oh. You didn't read the job description, huh? No, nah, I ain't read the job description. So <laughs> even that, like, like, right, and and this it it works, man. As as like you you're a recruiter, Mark. If you have a candidate that shows up, and they may not be the best qualified, but they took the time to learn about Mark Neesmith Consulting. They took the time to learn about your vision. They took the time to learn about your plan. They have a good reason of why they want the job. I've been following you for a couple of weeks now, Mark. Um, I like what you're doing. That's why I decided to apply. Not you know why did you apply here? I was scrolling through LinkedIn. And it said easy apply, so I press easy apply. Like, voila, you know what I'm saying? Like voila. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, look at that. We talking now? That's, right? funny. No. That's like, funny. Spend that time, especially. I mean, even with your partner, right? Spend your time to to cater your conversation, to talk to your partner in a way that they want to be. They want to hear the conversation, right? Some people like direct conversation. Some people like conversations they kind of circle around. Well, if this is your partner. You should know that about them. Right, you know, some people you can't be like, "Hey, baby, guess what happened today? I got fired." Like, you know, some people need to need to no. Tell me the whole story. What happened? Well, all right, baby, I didn't get the job. What happened? I showed up to the interview. Uh, I had on my wife beater because that's what I wear around the day, and <laughs> <laughs> I I wanted them to see. That's the problem. They ain't hiring me. I'm too real. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be myself all the time, and don't nobody want nobody real. Oh no, man, <laughs> right. Take the time to prepare for conversations. Take the time to see things from the other person's point of view. And that is principle eight. See, the formula that works is seeing things from the other person's point of view. And now we'll, we'll close it with what everybody wants. What everybody wants. Principle nine is what everybody wants. Right, this sentence right here starts off the chapter. I don't blame you one iota for feeling as you do. If I were you, I would undoubtedly feel the way you do. Wait, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be angry with you right now. Hey, whoa. I don't blame you. One, listen, if I was you, I feel the same way you do. What'd you just do? You just disarm someone by showing them sympathy. Hey, man, if I had your upbringing and background, if I had your temperament, I would be just like you. Right? In this book, it, it kind of hit me with a jab, right? Because I'm the kingmaker, right? I help men get better, right? I help good men become better. Right, I, I build kings, right? Yeah. He says, you probably deserve a lot less credit for where you are than what you think you do. A lot of things yeah. were environmental. And a lot of things were based on your temperament, right? I know I built myself. No, God built you. God put you in circumstances and environments. Humble yourself, young boy. I had the reason. Oh, my. Right? God put me in these positions. God gave me this temperament. God gave me these environments. God gave me all of these circumstances that led to me being who I am. And because God gave me these circumstances, which means God gave you your circumstances. And if I had your circumstances, I would probably be a little bit more like you. Right? In this book, he says, the only reason you're not a rattlesnake is because your parents were. Right? Right? Some things are uh, nature. Some things are environmental. Some things are temperament. Some people are what they are because of what they've been told all their lives. And how can I come in and tell you that you, that what you've been told all your life is not true and that you're wrong for what you've been told all your life? No. Let me some, take some time to have some sympathy for you. 
Because if I had what you had, I would be where you are. Right, we we underestimate the amount of privilege that we have. Even the simple privilege of being born in America, right? Like, oh, you know, say what you you know. People don't like it; and it's a tough time. But being born here is a privilege, right? I work with people that had to fight to get here, right? I work with people from different places that would love to be here. Man, you got you can just pray to whoever you want. Man, that's a, like those small little things that we overlook. Right, you can go to school for anything you want, right? There's a certain level of, of 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 privilege that we have here that we all have, and it's important to be sympathetic when dealing with other people. This is what everybody wants. Yeah, if you're in any customer facing or front facing position, or even just the individuals in your life, I mean that first sentence that CJ shared is gold. Yeah. I don't blame you one iota for feeling as you do. If I were you, I'd undoubtedly feel just as you do. I, I, allow that to start to just practice saying that. When I read that, I just kept reading it over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, until I got comfortable saying, I, like, this is now what I, my customer, my customer reps, our customer support, our client support, this This is, get used to saying this over and over and over and again. Because I mean, it is what it is, you know, like there's this human tendency to exacerbate hardships. No, no, you, you, you don't know. You don't know what it's like, right? It's, people like to relish in their handicap. Mm -hmm. you hear a person talking and say my cancer my ADHD my AT&T right <laughs> you start <laughs> you start giving yourself you start claiming my depression mm -hmm. wait that's not yours yeah you no, relish no, no, it you in your heart you don't understand my depression is different than everybody else's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours hit is different. Hey, if My I was you, I feel the same way, yeah. right? <laughs> and with that human tendency, you have to have a way to counteract it. Oftentimes, oftentimes when people are doing that, they're, they're actually fighting for this degree of comfort because they really want to remain the same. And so balancing this with sympathy for their suffering Oh my goodness. Like that that's it that's inevitable that's it, it, the only way you can really balance it is with the inevitability of pain. The only way I can balance your desire to stay the same and relishing your handicap in many cases is by leveraging sympathy with the reality of pain. No, no, I completely understand. If I was you, I'd feel the same way. However, yeah. if we don't do something about this, we don't take a different direction. If we don't, if you want different results, you have to do something different. Right? Any customer facing, it doesn't matter who you are or what it is that you're doing, the ability to show sympathy. That's what everybody wants. Tell me what you got, man. Yeah, we got to get from the point to where we want credit for everything to where we just want results. I don't care whose name is on it. I don't care what date is on it. I don't care about the colors. I don't care about the package that you put it in. I just want to know what do the results look like? Is this going to garner the results that we're looking for? And if it's not, then let's get back to the drawing table. If it is, and let's move forward. That's it. And when all else fails, just smile, baby. That's all you got to do. Just smile. <laughs> unless you're going to war, right? Let's go, let's go. Hey, smile when you're going to war. <laughs> smile when you're going to war. His grace is yes. sufficient. Yeah. Okay? His grace is sufficient, man. Smile when you're going to war. Wake up like, man, this is a beautiful day for war. It's a great yeah. day for war. The weather's yeah, out, man. Sun's outside, it's shining. 
How did yeah. the lighting? You know the song. You know what I mean? Like, it's a great day for war. Right. Let's get it. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and in this chapter, Dale Carnegie sends a, shares a great story of um, him missing something on the radio and this lady writing him a letter, giving her him a tongue lashing. And he, hey, he <laughs> said, he said, I started to go in on her. <laughs> he said, I hate to be your husband, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because he pronounced uh, uh, the wrong state some way he was from, but she gave him a lashing, which is what happens, right? If 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 one of us say the wrong word, there might be we might get you know comments and negativity, and it's easier, right? It's easier for you to take a comment and be and go right back at the person. It listen when you cut, we say you you ball it. What, what Tim say? You you approach me with a ball of fist. Mine's gonna ball up even faster, right? It's easy for us to do that, right? Opposed to what what Dale Carnegie said was. He said, I wrote her a letter and said, hey, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> she was so off put, like, I'm sorry for the way I responded. <laughs> right? No. Right? It's easy for you to, to, to fight fire with fire, right? That's why I love call, con Conquers a Multitude of Sin. It's That's hard. So it's hard. So it's hard to love somebody that hates you. It's hard to love somebody that's attacking your character. Just and you know they're attacking you. Yeah, just sympathize. You know they're attacking you, man. You hey, man, if, if I had the, the, the handicaps that you had, I probably would feel the way you feel. If I had the upbringing you had, I probably would feel the way you feel. If I had your temperament, right? If I had your, you know, your 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 size, right? If I was, if I was short like you, I'd probably feel the same way. Don't say that, right? <laughs> but... but <laughs> If I was a little man, I'd probably feel that way too, man. You got that little man syndrome. I understand, man. <laughs> right. right. Oh, you know man. man. But, this guy. But, but being able to sympathize with people is is a sure way of giving them what they want. Everybody wants everybody wants a certain level of sympathy. Right? Yeah. Because they exaggerate their illnesses. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, Tim, you see this a lot in mental health. Um, so that is it, man. We are in part three of how to win friends. We are winning people to your way of thinking. All right. We covered three sections, section seven, eight, and nine. Section seven <laughs> is how to get cooperation. It's let the other person feel like the idea is theirs. Section eight, a formula that works wonders is try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. And section nine, what everybody wants, key principle. Be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires. How do we're friends with most people? Shout out to all my people on Section 8, man. I love y'all. And just like that, <laughs> just a wrap, baby. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. We hope you've been inspired, motivated, and above all, empowered <laughs> to embrace your true potential. As we part ways, know that we're cheering you on from the sidelines. You've got what it takes and the world is your playground. The Mentality Tribe is growing every day, and we want you to join us. Look in the comments. Type, we breed kings. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, comment, and check out the other incredible episodes for more laughs, insight, and mind-blowing content. You won't want to miss it. You can also join us live every Saturday for our mastermind before this recording here. Type in We Breed Kings Saturday and someone will reach out to you and we will get you connected. So until next time, for King Nisme, King Akintade, I am King Timothy Hunter. Keep chasing those dreams, conquering those challenges, and mastering your mentality. Stay curious, stay hungry, stay legendary, and stay tuned in because this is mentality. Cut!